Hello friends, welcome to the next lecture on the CSR NET 16th September papers. Today we will discuss about all those questions related to the complex analysis. Question IDs are 312, 313, 384, 5 and 6 are there. We will try to solve all the questions with the help of shortcut tricks. Myself Dr. Gar. You can simply follow my YouTube channel Dr. Harish Gar for finding the various videos. Else follows my this Telegram channel link. Let's start with this question. So what is the what is my policy is as I discussed in the various other videos we will try to solve this question with the help of the shortcut tricks instead of the solving each question. Make sure you have a one minute time in order to solve in the, any of the competition exam. So how you can solve this? So if you read this statement very carefully what is the statement uh, suggested that that means modulus value is my one of the complex number. So we all know if I say f e raised to power z, say for example, this is a 1 when, when z is 0 or z is purely a complex number like of this form. But this option is rule out because in this case, it must be 0. So it must be 0. It means this is possible only when x is 0 and y is 0. But it can, but e raised to power z can never be 0. And also moreover it is a for all r. So this option is cancel out. Another option is when z is purely a complex number. So how you can do that is purely complex number. So firstly you can see that this I can firstly take about this part. I can write this portion of this of here. Now my target is to think about e raised to power of iota of something. And that something is my real number. Then only it will be the one. So it means if you look about that, that is my real number. So it means my target is to make them this to be a iota. And that's the answer of this, uh, this uh, question is there. When this e raised to power, this becomes a iota. So clearly says that this becomes a iota when this will goes to the 0 and this will goes to the 1. So when this cos of y will be 0. So when it is a odd multiplus of the pi by 2. That's the answer of this problem. So which is the answer is this is the correct answer. There is no need to solve the problem. Just remember that e raised to power something in the complex number when it will be 1. When this is my purely a complex number. Remember 2 plus iota 3 e raised to power is not a 1. But e raised to power iota 3 is always be a 1. Similarly for all. So my target is to make them a purely imaginary part. So this imaginary only when this is a iota form. So that's the answer of this problem. Look about the another one. So which of the following statement is my false? So, so remember that what is that this is nothing but my Taylor series. Again, we will try to solve with the help of one minute trick. Your target is to find the a1, an, an and so on. So that's very simple. Remember this simple trick is what is the an is? That is the nth derivative over n factorial. And what is the center of this power series? I can write this as z minus 0. So you can find all those derivatives at the point 0. So it means in order to get this answer a1, a1, second, third and fourth, you can solve like this way. This is my fz. So firstly, we can take the first derivative. What is the first derivative of this? So it is minus 1, this here, plus 1 minus z e raised to power is same and 1 plus of z. So what is will happen? I, I can common this z plus z square upon 2 is common. So what will happen? This is minus 1 plus 1 minus of z square. So it will be minus z square e raised to power of this. So clearly say that this is my f dash of z. So the first answer is my correct. But we need a false answer. So it means the first one is not the false answer. So it is my true answer. Now how you can find a1? So what is the a1 is? The derivative at the point 0. So what is the derivative at the point 0 over 1 factorial? This is my a1. So clearly say that this is a 0. So a1 is my 0. Can you find the a2? That is the second. What is the a2 is? Second derivative at the point 0 over 2 factorial. So what is the second derivative of this? Clearly says that if you take the second derivative, it will take a 2z of this plus z square of this and this clearly says that because of this term it will be 0 it will be 0 so this is a 0 a1 and a2 both are 
same so it is also the correct answer now clearly says that both are zero and if you find the a3 that also be there so it lies zero equality appears it's a less than so this is also the correct answer there is only one false answer so this is the right answer of this problem look about the another one so if you have the open subset omega of the complex plane such that zero belongs to this then which of the following is true that's again a very simple task so there is no need to solve the problem just look about that what is the option is open subset open subset and open set subset the what is that this is just like a image like if you have a mapping from say g to complex plane and what is that if i consider this is my g so this is my f of g so your target is to prove f of g is my open so do you remember which things come in your mind when this is here i already discussed in my previous gate examination as well as the previous csn8 question this is the open mapping theorem what is open mapping theorem is if f is a non constant analytical function and if you consider g as open set then f of g is also open that's the same task so your target is to prove only f is my non constant analytical function look at the first part we all knows that e raised to power z is analytic fine it is also the non constant so the and this is my open so what is the meaning of that f of this is also open so it means this is my correct statement clearly say that this is also the correct statement because sin of z is my analytical function which is a non non zero or non constant also omega is my open set so this is my open subset so this is also my here look about this one e mod of e raised to power z is my analytical so mod of e raised to power z is also mo, mod of e z is also analytic so this is analytic and this this can never be zero because zero belongs to omega if zero belongs to omega can zero belongs to e raised to power z of mod because e raised to power z can never be zero so it means this is not true this is only if you have a z complex number this is only possible when z is a zero then again it's a one if z is x is zero then it will never be a zero so it means this is again the open set it is also correct option look about this one again zero belongs to this whether zero belongs to this yes zero belongs to this yes that's true also if you consider any of the small neighborhood of this any of the neighborhood this does this value belongs to the mode of sin z no why because this part is my negative once this is negative so it does not belongs to the mode of this so what is the meaning of that it means zero is not interior point so once zero is not the interior point it means this is not a open set because we all knows every interior point of the open uh, open set has the every interior point is there so this is the false statement so the right answer is my a b and c are the correct options look about the another one what is that this is the entire function that is the analytical function are there some equation is given to you consider the following set and your target is to check about this limit point limit point limit point there is not a limit point so firstly we will think about here it means f of z is consist of the one or minus one can you think any of the function f which satisfy this property firstly look at that this is the square what is that this is f square plus f dash square is one so what which thing come in your mind kalil says that if you consider x is f is my sin z so what is that this is sin square z what is the derivative of sin z is cos z so clearly says that it's satisfied but f of this belongs to the values from minus 1 to plus 1 so it has all those values from the minus 1 to plus 1 so this option is false it consists of only 1 and minus 1 now we will think about this other three options now which things come in your mind when in the complex analysis when you talking about the limit point that is called as the interior theorem that's over so that is called as the interior theorem what is the interior theorem is if you have the analytical function that is given to you every entire function is analytic 
and a set has all the zeros of the s so if you consider the zeros then it has the limit point of this then you can say f is identical so what is the meaning of that so consider this is my given to you so firstly we will try to make the following set so that is a second derivative so firstly you can take the derivative of this so f f dash plus sorry this is f dash scale so this is a 2 f dash f double dash is 0 clearly say that if you take 2 as a common f dash is a common what is the meaning of that f plus f double dash is my 0 what is the meaning of that it means because this is my analytic this is analytic product of the two analytical function is 0 it means either the first part is 0 or the second part is 0 so what is the meaning of that this is corresponding to my x this is corresponding to my y so what is the meaning of this is equal to 0 this means f dash has 0 what is the meaning of the a function has a 0 what is the meaning of the 0 is that means collection of all those here which is satisfied here so in this case this is f dash so it means x has a f dash has a 0 so what is the meaning of that either this or this it satisfies this property a set s in this case s is my x x has a 0 so that's satisfied which is the limit point of this because this is a 0 given to you it means f is identically a 0 so what is the meaning of that either x or y has the limit point is the correct statement look about the second part if y has a limit point it means if this condition satisfied then f dash is my constant does it means that f dash is constant can you f dash is constant so what is the meaning of that it means f is my uh, variable so can you think any of the function which satisfy this condition again that's a very simple you can say f is my sin z what is the second derivative of this first is cos then minus of sin z clearly say that this satisfied here but what is the f dash f dash is my cos z is it constant no so it means f dash is constant is not satisfied look about the third property if x has a limit point it means this value has a f dash is 0 what is the meaning of the f dash 0 it means f is my constant is there so it means this property is my satisfied so the right answer is my a and c look about the another one so this is the question number 366 so what is that this is the composition are there and which of the following statement is true so here so look at that this is for all the natural number remember so instead of taking all firstly i will show you here what is that f is the mapping from u to u so what is the meaning of that f of u is the part, subset of the u fine now what is the composition so if you take n is my 2 what is the meaning of that composition f circle f so if i take f circle on the u what is the meaning of that f of f u now what is the f of u is a subset of this so it is a f of u which is also a part of this similarly if you take the n is 3 what is the meaning of that i can return this part as of f of f 2 so f of 2 is the subset of this and here so it means this is the correct option now look at the first third and the fourth so again if you take n is 1 in this case what is the meaning of that that means composition 1 derivative of this what is the composition of 1 is that is f f dash left hand side is the f dash what is the right hand side is f dash that's satisfied if you take n is my 2 what is the means that is a f circle f derivative and the right hand side is f dash of 2 so what is the meaning of that how you take that how you take the derivative of this how you take the derivative of this it means this function is nothing but my here how you take the derivative that is a g dash of fx and after that f dash so clearly say that i can return this as f of z now i can take the derivative that means f z of this and after that this is the derivative of this now we need the value at the 0 so what is the happen of this f dash this is the f of 0 what is the f of 0 is given to you 0 so this is f 0 
f dash of 0 which is nothing but my here so this is n is 2 also satisfied so clearly says that by the induction you can see this is also correct statement now look at the derivative so whenever there is a derivative in the complex analysis we will look about the Cauchy inequality so what is the Cauchy inequality says if I take the nth derivative at the point z is all modulus of this is always be less than of the m of here what is the r is that is a circle of radius center 0 is of my here now what is that z is 0 so this is my less than of this r there so center is my 0 you have to take the first derivative so if I take the first derivative of here it will be my m upon r clearly say and by using this first part it can be written as the nth derivative of this so which is uh, clearly says that it's a bounded because it is a less than of the finite number this is my bounded check whether of this so look at that you we all knows when this a raised to power n is if it is a bounded then what is the meaning of when it will be the convergent when this is less than of 1 so clearly says that this is my less than of the 1 if it is a bounded then it is a less than of the 1 this is also the correct options so it means all these four options are my correct answers. so this is the way you can solve all these four or five questions in a very simple and the easiest manner just remember what you want to prove and respective their results we will see the next lecture on the partial differential equations related to these questions till then you can simply like share and comment on my vi this videos best of luck students happy learning